www.ebitda.com. Educating investors. The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Trader's Edge with Steve Rhodes. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648 or internationally at 727-873-7618. The Trader's Edge. Now, Steve Rhodes. Good afternoon, folks. Welcome to the July 19th, the terrific Tuesday edition of today's Trader's Edge show. I'm your host, Stevie Perseverance Rhodes, who absolutely knows that each of us should always be pioneers of our future versus prisoners of our past. Hope everyone out there is having a great day. Hey, let's make sure we have an extraordinary one. And the easiest way to do that is to always remember that life is happening for us, not to us. That's right. When you and I make that one little two by four shift, it means we can find the gift in every set of circumstance that life is going to toss at us. Now, today, you and I, we're going to go check on the circumstance of these markets. We'll go figure out what those bulls and bears, what those buyers and sellers are communicating to us at just past 1 o'clock in the afternoon. I do want you to know I'm absolutely grateful for your presence here. But more important than that, and that's this. During this next 60 minutes, I'm here to serve you. So feel free to pick up that phone. We'd love to hear from you. Give us a call at 877-927-6648. Now, if you can't call in, or oh, you don't want to call in, you can always send me an email. Send it to steve at tfnn.com. And inside the subject heading, please put radio show question, of course, inside our Tigers, Dibble 80. And every ping will do. So let's go ahead and get this show started on Terrific Tuesday. Of course, this is Tiger Financial News Network. I'm Steve Rhodes. Welcome to the show. Right now, you got all the U.S. indices trading to the upside. Dow's up 565 points, about one and eight tenths percent. S&P two and one tenth percent, or 82 points. Nasdaq's two and four tenths, or 288. Russell's up 54. That's three percent, four percent for the semis. 107 points there, about three percent for the trannies. That's up about 386 points. Uh, a big move to the upside. But what price is doing is trading into resistance. We'll go take a look at that here. We looked at that during the 1 o'clock update. Gold is a flat, stop 80 cents. Silver's down 14 pennies. Lights recruit is up a buck 50. Trading out of 104.09. Natural gas is up 18 cents. That's down about 2.5%. Trading at 729. And the 30 year treasury printing at 138.19. That's off 21.30 seconds. Lean to charge dollar wise today, though. You've got booking holdings up 85 bucks, nearly 5%. Micro strategy up 16%. 36 buck runies. Transdigim group up 30 31 bucks, 5%. Dazimal Holdings up 23 or 5%. To the downside of the Signature Bank, off 17 bucks, nearly 9%. AMTD Digital off 10 bucks or 36%. That's a stinger. IBM is off 9 bucks, nearly 7% to the downside. So we've got things to look at. Of course, I want to look at what you want to look at. Let's just go take a look at the general markets as we speak. So again, we took a look at this chart right here uh, as we did the 1 o'clock update. And that is that each of the equity future contracts are trading into resistance. Well, the Dow is really got a ways to go. It needs to get up to the 31,867. It is taken on the resistance of the top of its profile. That's a 31,630. But if you take a look at the ES Mini, uh, 3922 and 3950 are its two resistance points. In the case of the NQ, price has been up here before. It's the third time, fourth time the charm. I don't know. But 12,197 is the level to be watched. We're trading at 12,192. And the Russell 2000, it was 1795.10. That's where it formed that uh, bearish engulfing candle. That created a potential resistance level. Well, now price can clear that. Then you're looking to move up into the 1900s, the next set of swing points out here in the 1916-ish area out there. So that's what the equity markets are doing. However, what you and I want to do is go do a little bit of a deeper dive out there because you want to know about the play-by-play, -play, not necessarily the daily. Of course, you want to know about the daily as well and where price is trading into. So we shift gears, and that gear is going to take us right over here, and that is to the ES mini charts. And the focus there, what should what your eyes should gravitate to is both the 60 and the 30 minute time frames. Why? Because you'll see bar number nine have completed for both of those. Now, <clears throat> the current bar, obviously on a 60 minute time frame, will not complete until 2 p.m. The 30 minute time frame is going to complete at 1.30. What that suggests is that we should at least see some type of short term top and a pull back to the oscillator unchanged line. Now, on the 60 minute time frame, that's at 38.88. Now, the 
30 minutes at 38.99. 38.99 will be the first up, and really you've got a 39.01.50. You've got the top of the current profile for the 60-minute time frame. So look for price to pull back to those areas. It's not a guarantee, but you do have the patterns that are setting up. Price should then go target those levels. And what's going to happen at those levels, I don't know. We'd have to sit here and wait and take a look at what else might be going on on some shorter-term time frames out there. So that's what's going on inside the ES Mini. If we uh, quickly take a look at well, I don't know how quickly we'll see how fast this is going to operate today because I've got a couple of windows open based upon some questions that had come in earlier. But let's still wait uh, just a few moments out here and take a look at the NQ. We want to see what that is also trading into. And while that's going on... Uh, let me ask uh, Zakuda. Uh, oh, you want to take a look at NLY. Okay, so let me get that uh, written down here. Uh, NLY, so I can come back to it. So we got the NQ populating, and uh, if we take a look at the NQ 60 minute chart, you've got the same pattern going on. Both have got uh, nine counts, so it's already got a TD nine count pattern, but that high can come on the bar following bar number nine. You've also got wave number seven on that 30 minute time frame chart, so you've got two short term topping patterns. Is two better than one? I don't think it uh, means any more than uh, you know than one topping signal out there. But I just simply share that with you. If geez, on a 15 minute time frame chart, you've got a TD nine count top as well. Very cool out here. So in this in this case, we should see price pull back. Two. So the first level to watch is going to be that 60 minute top of its profile, 12184. Below that would be 12093 and 12132-ish or so for the 30 minute time frame. Now, here's the possibility. Possibility is that the price is able to bust through the resistance that we took a look at on the daily time frame and uh, how we will know that that's what its intent is, is that these TD9 count patterns will just simply fail. They'll just simply have a little bit of a burp, sideways move out there, won't pull back to uh, some levels of support out there, and just continue to motor on. That would tell us about strong momentum moves for those time frames, those time frames being 60 and the 30 minute time frame out there. So that's something to consider, and is that a possibility? When we take a look at the ES and the NQ, we also have our, our TAS market breadth uh, set of profile data out here. Now, this has shifted since about an hour and a half ago. We're looking at the S&P 500. Now, three of the four speed dials are in the bullish zone. So the 60 minute, the 240, the daily are in the uh, bullish zone, meaning that there are more instruments trading above the top of their profiles than trading below the bottom. The weekly still has got a lot of work to do. That's for the S&P 500. If we take a look at the NDX 100, what we'll see is the same setup out here, except on the weekly basis for the NDX 100, it doesn't have as much work as the S&P 500 has to do. What I mean by that is right now we have 12 instruments trading above the top of their profile, 17 trading below the bottom. If all of these, the weekly chart chart starts, the weekly chart start moving over to a bullish crossover out there with the other four time frames, well then we've got a rally that should stick for at least a couple of weeks out here. We don't have those conditions just yet, but there are conditions enough to support support the shorter term time frame moves. But let's keep our eyes on these TD nine count patterns out here. Uh, the again the hourly time frame is not going to complete until we get off the air at uh, 2 p.m. But you know what to look for. You know some of those levels that we're taking a look at out here. And if we do see a retracement out there, that should come as no surprise to anyone listening in the show. We get back to this breakout here. We've got uh, four questions that are coming from uh, email, one inside the Tiger's Den. So I think uh, Stevie needs to get to those. We'll be right back. inflation, where your purchasing power is eroded, there's no better place to protect your hard-earned money than in gold. Vista Gold's flagship asset is the Mount Todd Gold Project in the Northern Territory of Australia. This is Australia's largest undeveloped gold project. We are talking a world-class gold project in a Tier 1 mining district. This is a large-scale, low-cost project with significant existing infrastructure in a politically safe and friendly mining jurisdiction. Vista Gold just completed the Mount Todd Feasibility Study, which resulted in a 7 million ounce gold reserve in a 16 year mine life. All of this combined with the approvals of all major operational as well as environmental permits. This distinguishes Mount Todd as an attractive, de-risk partner, ready development stage gold project. 
Vista Gold trades on the New York Stock Exchange under the symbol VGZ. Steve Rhodes started his trading career as a student almost 20 years ago, and the student has now become the master. Steve won the prestigious Timer of the Year Award in 2018 and barely missed that mark again in 2019, finishing at number two for the year. An amazing accomplishment. Steve Rhodes is committed to sharing his techniques and knowledge with anyone who wants to learn, and he shares his vast amount of trading knowledge every day in his Mastering Probability newsletter. Steve's award-winning newsletter, Mastering Probability, is delivered every trading day with updates throughout the afternoon. Sign up for Steve's market newsletter, Mastering Probability, and you'll receive access to seven of Steve's educational webinars absolutely free. At TFNN, all our newsletters come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have absolutely nothing to worry about. Visit TFNN.com and try Mastering Probability 30 days risk-free today. TFNN, education investors. Are you looking for a way to consistently add winning trades to your portfolio? Tom O'Brien is here to help. Tom O'Brien has been successfully trading markets for over 30 years. A frequent contributor to TD Ameritrade Network and CNBC, Tom O'Brien founded TFNN over 20 years ago to help educate investors just like you. Tom's daily market newsletter, Market Insights, is published every morning when the markets open to give you the competitive informational edge you need to succeed. These newsletters are packed full of Tom's advanced technical analysis and are geared to deliver comprehensive strategies for a successful portfolio. Get Tom O'Brien's newsletter, Market Insights, today and try all of our products and newsletters 30 days risk-free with our money-back guarantee at TFNN.com. TFNN. Educating Investors. Call now. Toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Welcome back, uh, folks. So let's go take a look at the first request out here, one from the Tiger's Den, and that is to take a look at your symbol NLY, that is Annalee Capital Management out here. And so we take a look at this. We can see it has a uh, wave seven bottom. Uh, that formed out here on uh, June the uh, 17th. Price right now is taking on a swing point out here from June 27th. Now, it's doing it with much lighter volume. That swing point, you can't see that on the white background charts, but I can share with you that the volume at that swing point was 35 million shares, and you're doing 11 million shares as we speak today. So it's not as if it's moving into that swing point with volume. If it did, we'd say, hey, it's definitely going to go test the high. And it may do that anyway, 638. But the thing is, if it was pushing with volume and it took out that high, that high, by the way, is at 638, if I didn't mention that. I think I did. Uh, then you could have a confirmed A to B equals CD to the upside. Even if we do get a A to B equals CD to the upside pattern out there, Zakuda, what I want you to pay attention to is the price level of 644 and, more importantly, 667. On any further rally out there, that 667 is where a counter trend move would end. That is the center of the center chart out there. That's the weekly time frame. And that is the center of its bullish structure profile. Where price closes below a bullish structure profile for another two consecutive sessions, counter trend moves typically find resistance at that center line, 667. Now, if price can take that level out, then you're off to 701. That's not what the charts are telling us right now. What are the charts telling us? Really not a whole lot out here, other than what I've already shared with you. The monthly chart is really suggesting to you and I that longer term, this may want to trade all the way back to the uh, lows, wave number seven from back in uh, March of 2020, down to the 350 level out there. So, uh, But in the meantime, you might get a rally out here. That was the bigger picture on NLY. So I do hope that helps you out, and uh, thanks so much for the request. Dan, inside the Tiger's Den, he wanted to uh, get the uh, levels for Intrepid Potash. IPI is a ticker symbol. So we'll get that up on our screen right now. And uh, I'm not sure which levels it is, but I'm going to give you the daily, the weekly, and the uh, monthly out here. So we take a look at Intrepid Potash. It's got a, a new profile that formed about three days ago. The uh, bottom of that profile, or support, is at 36.20. And the top, which is resistance, where sellers are located are at 42.59. Price is well below the uh, weekly set of profiles. On a monthly time frame, price is below the monthly profile. And the monthly profile out here, 
uh, the bottom of which is at 48.79. So where does this leave us with this instrument? So the daily time frame formed a TD9 count bottom. It did that, uh, looks like on, was that Friday? No, that was on Thursday. So on Thursday, it forms a TD9 count bottom, price just consol <coughs> consolidating or trading within <coughs> its daily profile out there. If price can take out at 42.59 level, today's volume is 169,000 um, shares. It's basically going against 700,000 shares, so it doesn't seem likely. But the uh, price still may hit the top of that profile at the 42.59 area. If price can get above that, then you've got TD9 count breakdown resistance at 46.40. So those are your resistance areas out there. I hope that helps you out. And uh, Dan, thanks so much for their request out there. We've got a request to take a look at NVIDIA, NVDA, that's for the G-Man. And it just says, can you take a look at NVIDIA? So we will, and that can't be right. I don't think NVIDIA traded all, well, I don't think it traded all the way down there. Let me try to restore all this historical data. And now, let me, now I've got to take a look at it on my other set of charts. Just, no, okay, there we go. So we're back to um, somewhat being accurate out there. Uh, so, whoops, didn't mean to do that. Dang it. I did mean to do this. Okay, so we take a look at NVIDIA. You've got the A to B equals CD pattern. You can easily see that out here. The one-to-one -one price projection was at 164.47, but yeah, you didn't get a, a, bull, a bearish reversal candle yesterday. In fact, you got a bullish candle. Bullish candle, what do you mean, Stevie? I see a red body. The body of the candle just tells you where price opens and closes. doesn't tell you whether it's bullish or bearish. Price actually gapped up yesterday. That's why I said it was a bullish candle. And it gapped up over the top of the profile. So on the A to B equals CD pattern, uh, this should take us to, well, the next level is 169.86. We're very close to that. Above that is 176.72. Uh, these profile levels that I'm providing to you, they are just used as guidelines. Price does not have to hit those levels, with the exception being the one-to-one -one area. You really got to get to at least the one-to-one -one or very close to it in order to get that pattern. Now, once we're done with that, then we use our expansion tool. The expansion tool is a Fibonacci expansion of the uh, measurement of the A to B line. And we just simply uh, multiply that times 1.272, or that's what I do, or 1.618, or 2.0, or 2.618, or, or pi out there. And my preference would be, I'd say, either a good key lime pie or lemon meringue pie. Uh, but I'm not going to say no to a chocolate pie or an apple pie uh, or a blueberry pie. I basically, uh, you know, uh, pies are us. But with regard to NVIDIA, and I'm sure that you didn't ask about pies out here, but pie is a uh, expansion of a uh, Fibonacci expansion. Your next level of resistance out here, because you are above the top of that uh, daily profile, is going to be that red oscillator and change line coming to you from the weekly time frame. And that weekly time frame out there, oscillator and change line level is at the 170.11 area. On a monthly basis, this is still suggesting to you and I that NVIDIA wants to get back to the 134.59 level. Um, on the uh, weekly chart out there, you do have a buy the D point. I mean, I can see the A to B, the B to C, the C to D. So you do have a weekly bottom as well. So watch that red oscillator change on it. Price get above that is signaling that it wants to move up to the 191.64 level. So I hope that helps you out. I don't recall who asked about NVIDIA, uh, but that was inside the Tiger's Den. Now let's go to uh, some questions that have come in by email. The first one coming in from Larry. Larry R says, hey Steve, uh, would, you go, would you go long GDX here and now? Only leg F down on the daily time frame. So let's get the GDX charts up on our screen here for Larry. We'll take a look at those, and then we'll do what is even more important for Larry, which is go take a look at uh, some or all of the components with inside the GDX. So here, your question was, if we just take a look at the GDX, would you go long the GDX right here, right now? What I don't have, I'm going to take a look at the daily time frame. What the GDX has not yet provided to you and I is some type of bullish reversal candle out here. That would then confirm a Rhodes Mintum indicator bottom. So that's the thing that I would first wait for to confirm some type of bottom. You'll see a TD9 count, but that's not a bottoming pattern because the low so far is on bar number seven. It doesn't look like today will get carried away and bust out that low. So that pattern's not going to be able to assist us. The pattern that would assist us is a, some type of bullish reversal candle that would then confirm a Rhodes Mintum indicator bottom. The weekly time frame chart, you can see an A to B equals CD to the downside. I don't know if it's confirmed. What I mean by that was the B point passed with volume. Either way, it may be an A to B equals CD to the downside. And the monthly time frame says price gave back to 2210. But that does not necessarily tell us the entire picture, does it? 
What do you mean, does it, Stevie? You just looked at the GDX. Well, what I meant by that is you really got to go take a look at what's underneath the covers out here. And if we go take a look at what's underneath the covers, we're going to change our screens, although there's going to be some charts that show up on your screen right now. But those are not the top eight instruments that make up the weighting structure with inside the GDX, and that's really what we want to go take a look at. So we're going to flip over to that set of charts out there in the first one. Now, these could be out of order just slightly, but if we take a look at Newmont Mining, now that can't be right. I don't know what's going on with Stevie's system out here today. That's a bummer. Well, I say that can't be right. I mean, it could be right. Maybe Newmont Mining did get up there. No, it didn't get up there. So we take a look at Newmont Mining. It really looks like the GDX out here, and you can see this is waiting for a bullish reversal candle as well. Ticker symbol, G-O-L-D. Now, that looks like that has formed a buy the D-point pattern. It did it about four days ago when it formed that bullish hammer candle. Take a look at Franco Nevada. Franco Nevada needs a bullish reversal candle to confirm a bottom as well. The same thing with regard to uh, Agnico Eagle out there. You do have got a TD9 count bottom on WPM. Steve Rhodes with TFNet. We'll be right back. If you want to take advantage of this sector, now is the time to subscribe to my Gold Report. The Gold Report is a comprehensive look at the metal sector as well as the markets that move gold, which is the currency and bond markets. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to lose. Every Monday morning, I publish the Gold Report with coverage of gold, silver, bonds, the XAU, HUI, GDX, as well as more than 30 different mining equities. To see for yourself the types of profitable trades that are recommended within the Gold Report, sign up now by visiting TFNN.com. Don't miss out on the next great gold trade. Sign up today. TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting TFNN.com. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern for free. Each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Welcome back, uh, folks. And, uh, so back to Larry's question. Uh, you know, we took a look at some of the uh, uh, top instruments, weighted instruments inside the GDX. Uh, maybe a couple of them had some bottom patterns, but you, you need more than that out there. And the last thing. That you certainly want to see if you're going to take a long position inside of the mining sector uh, because of its directional correlation to uh, gold is to see gold moving higher in all major currencies. Let me underscore this. What I just said was gold must, and I mean capital letter must, move higher in all major currencies. Gold was trading up today in terms of U.S. dollars. People are wondering why could it not get legs out there. Well, the reason it couldn't get legs is because if you happen to be a trader – that's looking at gold priced in euros. If you're in most of Europe, that's one way to look at it. 
They're not looking at gold rallying. In fact, it's trading much lower. It's down at 1662 per euro out there. If we take a look at gold price in yen, it's still below yesterday's close out there. So it's not as if it's a big bullish move there. And gold in pounds, expressed in pounds, is at 1422. It's moving lower out there. And that's the reason why, you know, you need to see a, a bullish run. You need to see it moving higher in all of the major currencies. I know most of, us, uh, most of us have been trained because gold is priced certainly in U.S. dollars, but we have to think like traders globally. This is a global market. This is especially a global market out there. And that's the reason why we're not seeing gold move that well. So has it made a bottom? Larry, it's possible. Uh, just with regard to the tools that I use out there, it has not confirmed that for us. And if you get that confirmation and you can get gold moving higher in all the currencies out there, well, then I believe you're on to something. Let's go to the next question that came in. This is coming in from uh, Mike in uh, Portugal. Mike, thanks for uh, listening as always. Uh, two for Tuesday. Once take a look at uh, Apple or Microsoft. Uh, or if you're doing these symbols for others, please consider one of the next two in the NDX 100, the market, Amazon and Tesla. Well, I tell you what, Mike, um, let's go do this. Just like we did for uh, the GDX, let's just simply go take a look at the daily time frame charts. Hopefully you'll allow me just to go take a look at those. And we can take a look at several with inside the NDX 100 and see what they're communicating to you and I. So here we've got basically the top weighted instruments. And uh, if we take a look at Apple, what we know about Apple, I'll just simply expand out the chart. As yesterday, it confirmed a sell the D point pattern. A sell the D point pattern requires an A to B equals CD. I'll draw on the A to B line. I'll just carry the A to B line. Whoops, A to B line over to the uh, C level. You can see it was more than a one-to-one -one area. Yes, it was a bearish engulfing candle. In order for Apple to truly get bullish, it's neutral right now. In order for it to get bullish, it has to take out yesterday's high. Otherwise, you've got a valid sell the D point. What has held, yesterday was a slight close below the top of the profile, it's back above the top of the profile, and that's why Apple is kind of a neutral, it's not kind of, it is a neutral signal, but it does have a top out there. If we take a look at Microsoft, Microsoft is just simply consolidating with inside its daily profile. That's between a range of 245 to 268. It's pretty much at the midpoint at 257 right now, so not really anything significant there. If we take a look at Amazon, Amazon has just really been trading sideways here. It's been doing that since the early part of of, uh, June. We're in mid-July. Um, price is trying to take out the resistance of the top of its profile. The top of its profile out there is presently at uh, 116.99. If price can close above that, it could signal move up to the 120 area. Tesla, uh, so you wanted Amazon and Tesla and Apple and Microsoft, so you're getting a four for what Tesla is doing. Let me just start to update this chart here. But it's also just consolidating with inside its daily profile. That's between the range of uh, 678 to 743. No breakout there. Yesterday tested that 743.20 level, and it was rejected. You didn't ask for these, but we're going to go uh, take a look at them anyway since they're on our screen. Google been trading that sideways consolidation mode. It's got resistance at 119 and a quarter, support at 106.99. Facebook is the one that, well, let me just update this chart here with all historical data. Facebook is the one that is attempting to break out. It's trading above its prior highs. It's trading above the top of its profile. Um, don't know if it's doing with any kind of volume here, but um, Facebook looks like the one that wants to actually run higher. Now, it could easily run up to the 202 level. We'd want to go look at the weekly time frame charts. Uh, to uh, confirm that. We talked about NVIDIA, so we don't need to go take a look at that. And Broadcom out here just consolidated with inside its daily profile with 514.15 being its level of resistance. So, Mike, in uh, Portugal, you got a uh, eight. You got all eight of these at uh, one time out there. I do hope that uh, helps you out. Again, the NQ, as we know, is sitting up at resistance. Let's go to our next question. This one is coming in from Hector and Patty. They are our fuel injectors. Hector and Patty are asking, well, first they say, happy tequila by ice cold margaritas. So well, I'd say just, uh, I like to take that tequila, good tequila, get it nice and cold, and just do a shot like that. Who needs that sweet stuff out there? Just a little lemon and you're in business. But uh, Ty, the question is, Occidental Petroleum, ABC up on a weekly. Google on a possible weekly A to B equals CD up. 
Uh, thanks. We'll catch the archive. Well, you're welcome. So let's go take a look at those. For these, we want to use my black background charts because that's our best A to B equals CD tool out here. So give me a moment. We will change uh, screens out there. And uh, then we need to go over to our three panel set of charts. Although, well, you know, we do need to take a look at you asked about the weekly time frame. So let's get the uh, weekly time frame for Occidental Petroleum up on our screen out here. We're going to get the daily and we're going to get the uh, monthly as well. So on the uh, monthly chart here, I think the A to B, A to B equals CD pattern, this right hand side is very clear out here. To me, it's very clear where that pattern is. And this actually, on a monthly basis out here, has a confirmed sell the D point pattern. And it did that when it created that uh, little uh, dark cloud cover uh, candle. And it did that last month. Now, what I don't know with regard to Occidental Petroleum, I'll do that on my other screen. I'll try to get that going out here. OXY. So on a monthly basis, is price found some support. Now, it's not profile support. Is it formed some? Uh, as it formed? as it pulled back to its monthly oscillator and change line? Well, geez, it's actually got a TD9 count top as well. So you got two different tops on the monthly basis, and its oscillator and change line on the monthly time frame change colors to suggest that price should pull back over time towards the 44.33 level. But your question was A to B equals CD patterns on the weekly time frame. Let me erase what was out there before, and let's just start from scratch. So I can see that you sent me a couple of charts. It's hard for me to reach that uh, or to read that here on my cell phone. That, so that, that's, where I'm, that's where I'm able to take the emails that are sent to me and be able to monitor. I, I do not keep my email on my trading system. The reason is I get so much junk email. I'm not, I don't want. I do not. I do not want this, uh, this trading system to get uh, corrupted. So I'm very careful with regard to what I do here. But as we pull back the weekly time frame for Occidental Petroleum, you know there are several A to B levels that you could choose. So on a weekly basis, you could choose, for example, the high from March of 2021, March the first week of March of 2021. You could also choose. It looks like the high from June 28th slightly higher high. In fact, that's the one that would actually be the one that you would use. Why would I say that? Because you got a lower low, so that B point was violated. So if we use the first one, which is what you would use as it was forming out there, but and you would have chosen as your B point, you would have chosen that low from the week that began April 19th. But we can see that there's a lower low that formed out there. That was on August 16th, and therefore you go to the highest high that precedes that point, and that says then the A to B equals CD would have shifted, and that would have been your pattern out there. Now, a second one that you could use is the one out here from the trading of October 25th. That would be your high. And then a retracement down into the uh, lows from December 20th. And I'm sure everybody out there is now saying, wait a minute here. I thought the A to B equals CD pattern was just so simple to see and view. Look, it is, it is not an objective pattern out there. It is a subjective pattern. But one of the things you're looking for is a retracement. You'd certainly like to see those be at a 0.382. Now, what I like to do is when we get stuff like this, where it starts to get a little bit confusing, which is the right one to use, I like to go to the larger time frame. And that's the monthly. On the monthly chart, I think the A to B equals CD pattern fits out just perfectly. That says that the high that we should be using out here is this high from the trading session of the week of October 25th. That's what I'd be using as my B point out there, Hector and Patty. Steve Rhodes with TFNN. We'll be right back. TFNN has been your trusted source of analysis for bonds, metals, stocks, commodities, and options for years. And we are happy to announce that we are bringing that same caliber of analysis for the Forex market. Teddy Kekstad has 30 plus years of experience in Forex trading, commodity risk management, Forex hedging, volatility, and so much more. Teddy releases his weekly Tiger Forex report every Monday morning with elite coverage of all major currency pairs, including the DXY, Euro dollar, pound dollar, Aussie dollar, Dollar, dollar yen, dollar Swiss franc, and so much more. Teddy will recommend specific trades when the market presents them and provide updates throughout the week when warranted. For the month of July, inaugural members to the Tiger Forex Report will receive 25% off the monthly subscription for as long as they're subscribed. Just use promo code TEDDY25 to lock in the added savings. This offer is good only for the month of July, so do not miss your opportunity to save on the Tiger Forex Report. TFNN, educating investors. Technology around us is changing every day. With so much happening, it can seem impossible to keep up with all the information. David White's investment newsletter, The Technology Insider, is designed to give you all the information you need to understand the technology that shapes today's markets and tomorrow's future. 
David White has made his living staying on the cutting edge of technology. His weekly newsletter will give you specific recommendations for value tech stocks, as well as entry prices, target prices, and stops to set for each trade. Dave delivers his weekly newsletters every Friday with updates throughout the week. You can get the Technology Insider at TFNN.com for only $37.50. Sign up for David's newsletter, The Technology Insider, and get an inside look at everything the technology sector has to offer. Try it risk-free today with our 30-day money-back guarantee. TFNN, educating investors. Biotech is booming, but for how long? Whether you think the biotech bull has room to run or has run its course, trade LABU or LABD. Direction's daily S&P Biotech three times bull and bear ETFs. Visit directioninvestments.com slash biotech today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors, such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. This program is brought to you by Vista Gold, traded on the NYSE American and TSX under the symbol VGZ. back up folks so we got the charts for google up on our screen here hector and patty are asking if the weekly is an a to b equals c to the upside and the answer is nah i don't see that out here at all hector and patty if i were going to try to draw an a to b equals cd pattern out here and stevie doesn't try to do anything he does it the low point the b point would be that's or the a point that's easy that's the uh may 23rd time frame for the b point i'd have to use the highest high or i should use the highest high and that is out here from uh, July 4th. And now I'd also have to use the bottom of that candle. Unlike having to use the top and bottom of a candle for an A to B equals CD pattern. Plus, price has got to pass the B point in order to be able to have an A to B equals CD pattern out here. What I see is mostly a sideways consolidation pattern inside of Google as we speak right now. So no A to B equals CD to the upside on the weekly time frame. Hector and Patty, I do hope that helps you out. Thanks so much for the request. Our next request was to take a look at this Chevron. CVX is the ticker symbol there. This is for one of our denners. Let's go out to uh, take a look at what do we want to look at here. I think we'll go take a look at my uh, my white background set of charts. So let's go flip over to those. Give me a moment here to change screens, if you will. I think these charts here might be more helpful to you and I. So that's why we're going to switch over. So now we've got the daily time frame. What's the daily time frame for Chevron Show? You got a nice TD9 count bottom. Uh, then you've got a gap to the uh, upside out there. In fact, you have a do you have an island bottom? I'll be a son of a gun. So, um, okay. So we got, let me just make sure. So the high, 136.16. The low, 136.43. So what Chevron has done, what it did uh, back on, well, it did this on uh, July 15th. It did this on a uh, Friday out there. I don't know who asked me. G-Motion. G-Motion, what uh, Chevron did was formed one of the bullish patterns uh, one of the most bullish patterns that you can get out here, and that's an island bottom. What's an island bottom? Let me switch over that an island bottom. So if you take a look and see bar number eight out here, uh, price gap down. It says falling window out there. That's how I was easily able to say, well, you got a, maybe got an island bottom because on the very two trading sessions later, you had a gap to the upside. And I checked just to make sure the price had not hit the high from the trading session of July 14th. So not only do you have a TD9 count bottom, You've got an island bottom pattern out here. So this could be suggesting that at least Chevron is really getting ready to motor higher. What Chevron is now dealing with, though, it is dealing with uh, a resistance level. And the resistance level from a profile that formed about three or four days ago. And that's at 145.45. And above that is 146.96. If you can clear 146.96, it really adds that island bottom 
pattern out there. The weekly time frame price is below profiles out there. In fact, it's suggesting that price should uh, pull back to about 110.73. I'm not saying that's going to take place, especially in light of that island bottom pattern out there. You do have a TD9 count top on the monthly time frame, but price has pulled back and so far has held its green oscillator and change line. That puts it into a neutral position there. So neutral there. Weekly is bearish. And the uh, daily time frame is uh, very bullish out there, almost like these markets, almost like these uh, markets out here. So I hope that helps you out, G Motion. But you do have a very nice pattern set up with regard to that island bottom. If you're long, stay long, and I hope that that island bottom turns into um, turns into uh, something very, very nice for you. Let's go to our next question out here. The next question coming in from Nicholas A. Nick writes in. He says, "Hey, Steve, SMH going into resistance around 223." 42 of June 10th. Do you see a, a pullback? Uh, thanks and have a terrific Tuesday. We have a terrific Tuesday as well. Let's get the uh, charts for the SMHs up on our screen. We know that the semis are having a very strong day. They were up about, I believe, 4%. And the SMHs also have an A to B equals CD to the upside pattern out there. Um, so that uh, B point, uh, which is labeled A on my screen because of the uh, Chapman wave counts out there, that B point, which is 209.90, was taken out. No idea whether it was with volume or not. I can't tell the well. Actually, I probably can't tell that. The volume out there was uh, 2.7 million shares, and it was passed with. Uh, I just can't read it. 3.8. Yeah, 3.8. So you've got a nice confirmed A to B equals CD to the upside out there. That says, Nicholas, just beware. Just be watching for some type of bearish reversal candle. That could then confirm a Gartley sell pattern out there. And then that would suggest a pullback maybe to the top of the profile that's taken out today to 18.81. It could be suggesting the price were to get back below that, that price would go get its oscillator and change on. It's not what we have right now. Uh, if we take a look at the SMHs, price is uh, getting above the uh, its its red oscillator and change line. Something that has price has not been above its oscillator and change line since, since the beginning of the year, since the uh, first week of uh, the second week of uh, no, the first week of January out there. Wow. So, Tuesday, trading above the oscillator and change line is not as good as Friday closing above that level. So, right now, that's at 218.16. Uh, with regard to the SMHs out here, they've got resistance as well. That's the uh, top of its uh, profile that just formed uh, this week, and that's at 225.45. So that looks like a likely destination, 225.45. If price can motor on through that, then that gets uh, pretty bullish and would suggest to move up to the 234 level. Your specific question is it's going into resistance at 223.42. Um, I would say I would move that resistance right now to the 225.45 level, the top of that weekly profile. So, Nick, I hope that helps you out with regard to your question. Thanks so much for taking the time to write in, and we will look forward to your next question. Uh, we've got another question here from uh, uh, Nico. Nico says, uh, hope you are well. I am. Hope you are well also. You're wondering if you see an A to B equals CD up uh, both for the ES and the NQ on the four-hour time frame chart. So let's do this here. Let's go switch back to the black background charts where I've got that better A to B equals CD tool. And we'll go take a look at a four-hour time frame chart for the NQ. And I think I can do that by just going to intraday charts here. Let's change this to 240 minute. And let's go take a look at this. So, well, the answer to your question would be it's possible, but the B point hasn't been taken out. So here's, in essence, what the A to B equals CD on a four-hour time frame chart would look like, or at least one of the A to B equals CD patterns. The A point, uh, that's uh, down uh, 2 o'clock in the afternoon on June the 16th. The B point out here is 2 o'clock in the morning on June 27th. And the C point is going to be the low from 10 o'clock in the morning on June the 30th. So price has got to get above 12,262. You're at 12,246 right now. So that's a resistance level that you identified. If price can take that out, then it gives you a one to one price projection of 12,544 out there. Now, there are other A to B equals CD patterns that you could draw in here. That was just the primary one. Another one would be the C point that I use for the A to B equals CD. That becomes the A point. Point. The B point becomes this high out here on the uh, 10 o'clock in the morning on July the 8th. And then the C point is a retracement down in a 6 a.m. on July 13th. Your one-to-one -one price projection there gets you up to 12,339. 12,262 is your resistance level. So that's the areas that I would be watching out there, uh, Nico. Um, your question goes on to say, if so, uh, what would give you any more conviction on the nine counts in the lower time frames being taken out? 
uh, would you call an A to B? So nothing. I would be watching those those nine counts that you're referring to. So now let's go take a look at that because the 30 minute chart should be done. I, I see that the NQ is rallying, so it looks like that high may fail or may have failed. But uh, let's get over to those charts. Give me a moment. We'll change screens out here. Come on, work with me. And wow, that's weird. Okay, so now we've got the 30 minute time frame chart and sure enough, now this bar doesn't complete for 10 more minutes, but this is taking out that TD nine count top. And that suggests you've got a strong momentum move to the upside out there. Now what you're left with is watching the 60 minute time frame. This does not mean that we can't be making a top out here, but watch that 60 minute time frame as we come into the two o'clock close out there, mark that high, the price closes above that, we probably close much higher going into the close. Be right back. Vista Gold owns and operates the largest undeveloped gold project in Australia, the Mount Todd Gold Project. Vista Gold just completed their feasibility study, resulting in a 7 million ounce gold reserve. Vista Gold has all major permits approved and has retained CIBC capital market assistance in evaluating alternatives and in completing an accretive transaction. Vista Gold trades on the NYSE American and TSX under the ticker symbol VGZ. Vista Gold, executing a strategy to create shareholder value. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com. Educating investors. TFNN has launched the Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. Sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders. Just visit the front page of TFNN.com. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. Welcome back, up, folks. You got the Dow up 636, a little over 2%. The S&P 2.5%, 92. 2.8% 2 for the uh, NASDAQ 100, 3 and 3 tenths percent for the uh, Russell. Semi's up uh, 4 and 6 tenths percent, 122. So you got a nice rally going on. But let's not forget, if we go back and we take a look at what are these equity markets doing right now, you've got the ES Mini trading right up into resistance. Uh, one level is 39.22 or 39.26. If price continues to move higher, 39.50 is a key level to watch. The case of the NQ, 
You've got the uh, bottom of its profile. That's at 12,197. You've got the most recent high out here from the trading day of June 27th. That's at the 12,262 level. Right now, price trade at 12,242. In the case of the Dow, its resistance is up at the 31,867 level. In the case of Russell 2000, 1795. So what we want to do is let me go flip over and see if I can do this here or click, click real quickly out here, which is to go to the 60-minute time frame charts. Can I find those 60-minute equity futures charts out there? Get them all in one slot. We'll uh, change screens out here uh, because those are the ones, or at least the ES and the NQ. I, I can't say about the uh, Dow and the Russell 2000 just yet, but uh, we'll know. It's the NQ and the ES mini that have that TD9 count top, and they all do. So you have all four instruments on a 60-minute time frame that as we come into 2 p.m. are going to complete TD nine count patterns out here. Well, I take that back. I take that back, Stevie. The Dow is negating its TD nine count top, but the others are not. So the question is, is the Dow the leader or is it the others? Or are this is telling us that the other three are going to take out their TD nine count tops as well? I don't know the answer to that. If I did, I would tell you the answer to that. The answer will prob probably be released by 3 o'clock. Because if you do get a close above the high at 2 p.m., then those will have been negated. And that says we should close at the high of the day out there. Watch those daily resistance levels out there. And folks, stay tuned for your favorite polar bear, David White. Is he going to throw hot water on this fire? I don't know that that would help. Steve Rhodes with TFNN. Have a terrific Tuesday, folks. I'll see you tomorrow, 1 o'clock sharp.